So, for simple harmonic motion, we now have a function that gives us the displacement. How far away from the rest position, that's what this represents, distance from rest position, and if you like, we could set that to be zero, but it doesn't have to be. It's just the point at which it's at rest. We can find the distance from zero for any time t by putting it into this formula, assuming we know omega, the angular velocity. And that's useful. And it's a cosine function. So we could plot it, and it would look like a cosine wave. It's starting off at maximum in this particular case, and then so it's starting off at a maximum value and doing this. So that would be our zero here. So the cosine wave tells us it's starting displaced. If it starts at zero, it's just going to stay there. If I want to now come up with an expression for the velocity, I've got a, a function that gives us the displacement. What do I do when I, if I plot a graph of displacement, which we've got displacement against time, and it looks like this? What do I do to that function if I want to find the velocity? What's the velocity about? The gradient, right, Sophie. The gradient of the line, the rate of change of displacement with time is velocity. So to get velocity, I differentiate that function. And it will tell me velocity. The differential of cosine is minus sine. And the number in front of the variable t comes out. So that will be minus r omega sine omega t. And we've now got a new function that tells us the velocity. So velocity equals minus r omega sine omega t. So I've got um, my displacement function. Looks like this. A cosine function. I've now got a velocity function. That's a sine function. So the sine function is going to do this. Uh, if I can draw it. A bit like this. Should have gone up to the same height. And what I'm trying to show here is that if we relate that to what we were talking about, so the blue one is our velocity function, the red one is our displacement function. So when the displacement is a maximum, what's the velocity? Zero. And there it is. And if we think back to the previous slide, that's what we said. When the displacement is maximum, the velocity is zero. That's what we said. And so we proved that by plotting this, by coming up with it. And the same going up here, that when the displacement is zero, the velocity is a maximum. I didn't quite match it up there, my sketch isn't brilliant, but you see how, where it comes from. In other words, it's exactly the opposite idea to the displacement, i.e. the sine function. So velocity can be given by that. Let's look at this for a second. Let's think about our sine function in terms of this right angle triangle. If this is R, and this is x, and we can think about what this side is in terms of Pythagoras. It's the square root of the hypotenuse minus the other side squared, isn't it? So we can say what that opposite side is, and that's the side to do with the sine. So if this is theta, which is omega t, then we can say the sine of theta equals opposite, which is the square root of r squared minus x squared, over the hypotenuse, which is r.
So if we look back at this, and we replace sine omega t, or sine theta, with this in this function, we can write that the velocity equals minus r omega times the square root of r squared minus x squared over r, because that equals the sine of omega t. Oh, look, r's cancel, top and bottom. So velocity equals omega square root r squared minus x squared. Another really useful formula that tells us the velocity at any particular displacement away from the rest position. So if I know x and I know r and I know omega, I can find the velocity of this thing at any instant. A useful formula. formula. Ah, negative in there. Um, a word on this negative sign. The negative sign is to do with the direction of the force is trying to pull it back. Who was it asked the question? Right, Sophie. So if we go back to this um, and these motion ideas, if, it's, if we've got a displacement, we find that velocities and accelerations that we're going to talk in about, changes in velocity or acceleration in other words, are acting against the, mo the movement of the object. And so that's where the negative sign comes from. It's to do with the convention. So if we're actually calculating what the velocity is, we're, and we're only often interested in the magnitude of velocity rather than its direction, we don't worry too much about the sign. But the sign is giving us a sort of a convention when we set one direction as positive and one as negative. So that's an important formula. Now, remind me, when is the velocity maximum? So when x equals zero, yeah. Velocity is maximum at x equals zero. Remember that. Just pause this for a second. I would like you to rewrite this formula if x equals zero. Hopefully, we've got that if x is zero this is gone and I've just got the square root of r squared which is r in other words v equals omega r but or minus yes but that minus is really only in the sense of which direction is it acting in so the actual magnitude is just v equals omega r however it's not v it's v max okay if I want the maximum velocity it's just omega r and that's a formula we've come across before that relates linear velocity to angular velocity that you might remember. So that's another key formula to remember or to use. So we've got three now. We've got this, V max equals omega r, that V equals omega root r squared minus x squared, and that x equals r cos omega t. Three useful formulae.